you ever complained about, oh, there's a million channels and stations on radio and TV and not a thing to listen to or watch? Well, today will be a fun upload right up your alley. We're going to turn the Rancho into a radio station, more specifically an FM radio station today. Yes, we're going to make our own little low power FM, what some people might call a little pirate uh, transmitting radio station here today. It's not going to go far enough to, uh, to cause any disturbance or interference anywhere around here. It'll probably go a couple hundred feet, maybe 300 feet in any direction. And uh, it's going to be made simply and easily. And we're going to be using a cardboard, little cardboard box as our platform to build it. And it's going to be simple, and uh, I hope it's going to work. It's going to entail some really cool little construction uh, tweaks here. And, uh, well, at the end of it, we'll see if she fires up and actually transmits. We'll get the uh, FM radios on, and we'll see if we can actually uh, pick, up a, uh, pick up a transmission. So let's go in and see what we need. This is cheap and easy and fast. And uh, by design, I think it'll work okay, so we shall see. Let's come down and see our list of ingredients, because you want to have everything in place before you start. First of all, you're going to need some uh, hookup wire. You could use all one color, but I like things sort of coated uh, red for positive and the black for negative. A soldering iron. You're going to need some... Uh, solder here and don't use plumbing uh, plumbing solder for this you're gonna need a little bit of glue you're gonna need a uh, well you're gonna need a capacitor here an electric lit capacitor or 33 microfarad you're gonna need one transistor a 2n3304 and this is about uh, 40 cents this part is about 10 cents to uh, 0 0.01 uh, microfarad capacitor capa capa excuse me ceramic capacitors here 0 0.01 and you're going to need uh, two 10 picofarad capacitors down here and even feels a little magnetized there okay and uh, three uh, three resistors we have a, a 10k resistor 10,000 ohm we have a 470 ohm and we have a uh, 27,000 ohm or close to it. I think I have a 22,000 ohm in there. And we're going to be winding a little coil here out of some uh, 18 gauge copper wire, which really was stripped off of a piece of Romex, the ground. We're going to need a uh, quarter inch uh, bolt to wind it on. We're going to need a battery, 9 volt battery. We're going to need an MP3 plug. And you can cut that off of a, I had an old RCA cord that had gone bad. But this is what we're going to use to input our uh, music. And uh, some wire cutters, uh, a pair of uh, long nose pliers, a little punch to make holes in our uh, cardboard box. And we're also going to uh, be using a ruler because we need to measure out our coil once we uh, form it. So the first thing we want to do is form our little coil. And we're going to take this uh, wire here and we're going to wrap about uh, four turns around here very closely wound one next to the other. Get them in tight. And uh, well, let's do one step at a time. Let's get it wound on here first. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to wind our transmitter coil. So we're going to take our uh, copper wire, our 18 gauge copper wire, and we're going to put it on the uh, form here on the uh, quarter 20 bolt and make sure it's in a comfortable position. And we're going to wind it very close here, very close. Pull it tight as you wind it so it's really close. And we're going to do four turns on here, just like so. And we're going to kind of bend that into, take that around just a little bit more. And then we're going to bend it up so it has little legs on it. Take it all the way around so that they're aligned with each other. And then 
you want to bend that up like that and then you can actually remove your coil from the form okay and it's going to look like that and then we're going to uh, we're going to uh, cut off the legs so that there's oh I guess about uh, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch down on there and watch your eyes wear eye protection now your uh, now your coil looks like this looks like that and pretty and then what we need to do next is uh, I need to uh, shape this leg a little more on here okay all right and shape that a little bit like that so they're kind of in line with each other and then all I have to do this is why I have my uh, ruler here we need to spread this out so that this coil is 12 millimeters wide no more no less so I need to get another pair of pliers and then I need to uh, stretch this out so it's one point it's uh, 12 millimeters here okay that's why I have the uh, the uh, centimeter scale here so let me go grab another pair of pliers okay so now I've got my uh, two pairs of pliers I'm just going to grab the coil and uh, by the two ends and just kind of stretch the coil out and try to stretch it evenly here just trying to stretch it so it's uh, stretch a little that way so that it is 1.2 and we sit it down on here and I can sit it on my little gauge there and uh, make sure you're not cheating make sure that's uh, make sure that's kept straight there you need to pull a little more on that uh, direction and try to keep the uh, try to keep the coils uniform as you stretch it out here uh, okay there we go and I'm sitting it here and it looks like the legs are spread exactly 1.2 millimeters so that should be our uh, finished coil and again make sure that you keep things even as you spread it and I'm sitting it on there and uh, yeah that looks uh, that looks really good on there so our coils formed next thing is we want to mount our coil on the board so we're gonna make two small holes and try to uh, try to keep these spaced use your coil sort of as a uh, guide here for it and uh, this one leg needs to be uh, let me straighten this one leg a little bit here just a little slightly off okay so then we want to approximately find our mark the location for our other leg and make uh, two punch marks there and then we're actually gonna situate push our coil down through those holes and it should be a tight squeeze you might have to make it a little bigger I think I'm gonna have to make these a uh, bit larger here to accommodate so let me just get this set there she is you can see our uh, coil on there and once again you want to really measure and make sure those uh, feet are set at 1.2 yeah and that's perfect run uh, 12 millimeters right there so that is uh, really good so next thing we have to do is uh, is mount the rest of our uh, rest of our components here so next we're going to, uh, well, let me uh, look at the little diagram I did and I'll get back to you in one second. We're going to make, uh, punch two small holes and we're going to mount our 0 0.01 microfarad uh, ceramic, mi mic, uh, ceramic capacitor on here. And we're going to join the one leg to the uh, this side of the coil. In other words, you're going to make the connection to those two. 
Now we're going to grab, I have that sort of uh, twisted around there. I'm going to grab the solder and uh, solder that first connection. On there and make sure your iron's good and hot. It's going to take a little bit to heat that up. Okay, and that first connection is made on there, and the other end is going to be a uh, ground. We're not going to worry about them right now. So, already we've got uh, our first two components mounted, so let's keep moving on. Okay, next we're going to add a 27K resistor. I have a 33K. It's just about intolerance, so make a little hole down there, and we're going to connect one end of that to the uh, where we already have our dual connection between the coil and our 0 0.01 microfad capacitor. So we want to wind that around there. And now we have three hooked onto uh, one post there. So we're going to go ahead and solder that. Make sure your iron's good and hot. Okay, now those three are all connected. If you can get one at 27K, I just use a 33. It's close enough with intolerance, it's not going to affect the circuit. So there is our uh, third piece down. Okay, next we're going to add our electrolytic capacitor. And you have to be careful because electrolytics have a negative and a uh, positive side here. So we want to put our, uh, our positive side towards our 27K resistor. So I've made uh, three holes now. We're going to go ahead and uh, place the positive. We're going to put the negative away from the resistor. Put that down. And then we're also going to lift up the other leg of our uh, resistor here. And we're going to uh, send that down the hole now. The other of the, th the last of the three little holes that we made there send that one down okay like so and then what we're actually going to do it do is join it uh, turn it over and then join the positive lead with that uh, with that resistor there okay twist that around good to get a good mechanical connection and always remember get a good mechanical connection first before you solder okay makes all the difference in the world let's go ahead and get that joined on there okay and that connection is made real well now okay all right don't trim any leads yet we'll do that at the end so it's really shape taking shape now huh all right okay next we make another hole we're going to drop down our 10k resistor I think for good measure while we got it, we'll drop another hole there so we can drop our resistor down evenly. This is 10,000 ohms. Pop that in there. Now we're going to join that to where we have the uh, junction of the uh, positive already on here. In other words, this 10K one leg is going to work is going to connect to where you already have the positive lead of your capacitor and a resistor already connected now we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder that leg up on there so we now have uh, three components sharing one sharing one uh, one basic uh, connection there and that all looks real good make sure your soldering joints are real good all right let's get ready for our next component Next, we're going to add another 0 0.01 microfarad. And believe it or not, one of the legs of that is going to go to the positive terminal of the capacitor. And the two existing resistors are on there. Solder that up. And you now have uh, four things connected on uh, one point here. Okay. So you can see how nice our, uh, how nice our top is looking there on our little, uh, our little tiny transmitter. 